Welcome to Biblical Foundations for Africa, an in-depth look at the Bible as we learn how to discover God for ourselves as Christians in Africa. Join the Biblical Foundations team as they lead you through this exciting journey through the Bible. Let's get started. Hello, 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 and welcome back to Biblical Foundations for Africa. We're coming to you via the wonders of the World Wide Web from Johannesburg in South Africa. You know, we exist to encourage every single African Christian to read, to believe, and to understand the Bible for themselves. And then to go out into every single sphere of our society and make Jesus Christ glorious. My name is Norma, and as always, I'm privileged to be your traveling companion through the Bible. Today, we're continuing the second part of a two-part series, which we started last time, where we're learning about the different Bible study methods because we want to have a spiritually balanced diet. Our blog is all of the previous sessions, just in case you miss them, so you go on back and catch up. Just a quick recap from the first session. We said that whatever method of Bible study you choose, you always want to start your Bible study time by praying and asking the Holy Spirit to illuminate the passage of Scripture to you. A wonderful prayer that David prayed is found in Psalm 119, verse 18, where he says, Open my eyes, O Lord, that I might see wonderful things from your law. But remember that the aim of our Bible study, like we've said before, is not just to add to our knowledge, but we want to apply the word of God to our lives. So we've talked about the first four Bible study methods. We talked about devotional Bible study, topical Bible study, studying whole chapters of the Bible, and then finally we talked about studying particular verses of the Bible. So today we're going to continue and look at another four Bible study methods. So the fifth Bible study method that we'll look at is character study. Many, many, many scriptures in the Bible, like Romans 8, verse 28 to 29, point us to the fact that God wants us to be conformed to the image of his son, Jesus Christ. Basically, what that means is we need to think like he thinks, act like he acts, speak as he speaks, and respond like he would respond to our everyday situations. Essentially, God wants us to have the character of Jesus. So a character study takes an essential aspect of the Christian character like love or joy or peace or patience or kindness or any of those characteristics and looks at how the Bible speaks about the formation of such a character trait. This could even be done by looking at a biographical study, which is our next Bible study method. So a biographical study looks at different godly characteristics that were displayed by Jesus himself or any other godly men and women in the Bible, which we should or would like to emulate. So perhaps you struggle with patience. You might want to study the life of Abraham, who displayed great faith and patience. Or perhaps you struggle with anger. You might want to study the life of Moses, who struggled with anger. And you might study characters like David and Joseph to see outstanding aspects of godly leadership, of humility, of prayer. And the list just goes on. So a biographical study helps us to see the real lives of real people just like us who had challenges, who faced tremendous difficulties, but who trusted God through these difficulties and were victorious. Actually, sometimes biographical studies can focus on people who were not victorious, like King Saul, who didn't end very well because of his lack of obedience to the Lord. So we have much to learn from other people's lives, and I think it's just fantastic that the Bible is not just a book of rules and regulations, but that in it we find stories about real people and real events. So that's a biographical study. Then there is a book study. Remember that the Bible is comprised of 66 books and letters? Well, a book study looks at a particular book, and then looks at the themes and the issues that are addressed in a particular book of the Bible. It looks at who wrote it and to whom they were originally writing, and then it looks at how we as modern-day Christians can learn from it. Remember that the book of the First Corinthians, the First Corinthians was actually written by the Apostle Paul. This book was written to address various problems and issues that had arisen in the Corinthian church. 
There were issues of orderliness and worship. There were issues of sin and immorality. There were issues about the use of the gifts of the Holy Spirit and so on. So by doing a book study, we can get a general idea of what the context within which Paul made certain statements. Like his famous chapter on love in 1 Corinthians 13. Often we forget that this chapter on love was set within the context of the fact that people were displaying the gifts of the Spirit in the church, but they were not doing it in a loving manner. They were doing it in a prideful or a boastful manner. So Paul wrote 1 Corinthians 13 in order to emphasize that whatever gifts of power and the gifts of the Spirit we display, unless they're out of a heart of love for the body of Christ, they don't mean anything. You know, doing book studies really starts to make the scripture make sense, if you know what I mean. So I encourage you to take time to do a book study once in a while. Finally, the fourth and final type of Bible study is a word study. A word study does exactly what it says. It takes a word from scripture and it investigates it deeply. For example, as you read John 10 verse 10, where Jesus says the thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I have come that you might have life, and life in all its abundance. You might think to yourself, I'd like to do a word study on the word life. What did Jesus mean when he said he had come to give life, yet Christians die on a daily basis? So you might research this word life using a concordance and a lexicon, and you might find that the Greek word for life is the word zoe, and it means abundant life or eternal life. This might then lead you to study all the promises that Jesus made about all of those who believe in him having eternal life even beyond their physical deaths. You know, word studies can be very informative, very encouraging, and very, very useful. So in summary, the four Bible study methods that we've looked at today are a character study to work on characteristics of Christ that we need to develop, a biographical study to look at real people in the Bible who displayed either good or bad characteristics and learn from them, a book study where we examine the major themes and reasons that certain biblical books were written, and finally, a word study to dig deeper into certain words that are used in Scripture so that we become clearer about what that word means when it is used. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for giving us your written word in the form of the Bible. I ask you to show me great and unsearchable things in your word. Lord, help me to become a skillful and diligent student when it comes to handling your word. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. I really hope that this has helped you to get started with your Bible study. Find us right here every weekday with a new installment of Biblical Foundations for Africa. Chat to us on any of our social media channels. Be blessed and remember as you go out today to make Jesus glorious. Thank you for joining us today on our Biblical Foundations for Africa lesson. To find out more information, join us on our website www.biblicalfoundationsafrica.com Also, we'd love to have you as our friend on our Facebook page and follow us on Twitter. See you next time.